Ah, uh, yeah. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time to build a motorbike. Hey guys, welcome to Motorfields. I'm Rob Hamilton, and yes, you heard correctly. I'm going to show you how I did all this: the paint, the uh, the process, the removal, and uh, and hopefully, and hopefully you'll learn something, or you'll become inspired, or you know, maybe you're thinking of doing your own custom thing. I'm just going to show you the way I did it, and um, the guys I use in Sydney, absolute mofo. Like, look at this, look at this. It feels so good. Ah, yeah, it's awesome as well. I'm so keen to share this with you guys. Um, but for now, I'm just dropping the bike off to Gasoline Motor Co to have the indicators done. I'm getting rid of the bloody massive indicators here. And the tail tidy and the bash plate. So, I guess you'll see that in a future vlog, but until then, I'll see you back at home. Two hours later. Welcome to my place. This is my place. This is my couch. These are my pillows. Check my pillows out. Are they nice? Alright guys, so you're thinking about building your own bike, are ya? I don't know. Maybe not. Maybe you're not. Maybe you're not at all. But I am. Why am I doing this? I will tell you why. I had an idea in my head for so long. Oh my goodness. It was... I bought a Bonneville before my street scrambler, not knowing that I wanted a strip a scrambler. And it's funny because I actually didn't like scramblers. I had a Cafe Racer, that was my first bike and I built that into like this cool little boo, 250 Yamaha SRV 250 Cafe Racer. It looked sick, but then I got my big boy license and I wanted a big boy bike. The Bonnyville stood out to me. I wanted the Thruxton right from the start, from the get-go. But because the I've made the SRV 250 to sort of, you know, sort of look like a Thruxton, I just, I, I thought I should just sort of move on from it and uh, maybe go for like a tracker style. So I bought the Bonnie, nothing, it didn't, it didn't work out. It just literally didn't work out. The, it wasn't, it didn't resonate with me, you know? Like, you know how sometimes, a, you know, a, a bike just really, just boom, resonates with you. The Bonnie was sick, it was a cool bike and I did, I did have plans for it, but it just didn't work out. Uh, I bought the bike and about four weeks later, I rode a, uh, just a normal scrambler and I had the aerial exhaust, I had that, you would have seen it on my Instagram page. That was just a, that was a very enjoyable bike to ride and I, I just, I fell in love with it. I love the, actually love the high exhaust, it just felt, made me feel a bit, a bit boss. I, I did away with the, um, with the Bonneville because I thought I'm not going to spend time and money building this if I didn't really want to do it, you know what I mean? My heart wasn't in it. So I, I pulled the pin on it and I picked up this street scrambler. And so I had this idea in my head for so long. It actually came from um, a Premier helmet. That's what inspired the, the color of the bike. Just that real brushed steel sort of um, like black and monochrome sort of vibe. I just, and I wanted it to not be a show bike. I just wanted to, I want it to be a bike that I'm gonna use on a daily basis, I guess. And actually take it out into the, into the wilderness and get mud on it and not freak out so much about it if I drop it or anything. If I drop it, I sort of want that to be the vibe, you know, some scratches and stuff, full times. And I also love the sound of the Street Scrambler. Oh my goodness, the amount of YouTube videos I watched before I bought this thing. Man, I'm pretty sure I depleted the internet. So that's why I got the Street Scrambler. It's it's me, it's my vibe, and it's the best bike ever. Let's um let's start pulling this bike apart. A little disclaimer, um, I found out that while I was doing this, doing this, that I don't actually talk while I'm working on the bike because I'm just concentrating on how to pull the thing apart. There's a lot of um um and oh, oh, um and so the easiest and best way I think to do this would be to bring you to the office and I'll um, sit down and watch me do it with you and I'll talk over the top of it while you're watching it so then that way I can explain things with a little bit more clarity all right so let's go and do that right now ah oh, welcome to my office it's so bright this is a this is a this is a new addition I got a remote for this and everything look I can turn it off I can turn it on I can make it Make it really, really warm. Whoa, how's that? Oh, man, my eyes. Oh, I just don't look at it. You can't stare straight at it, otherwise you will go blind. 
Before jumping down to the garage and dismantling the bike, I just wanted to share with you guys the tools that I use for it, just showing that you don't need to go all out crazy on um, expensive tools or anything like that. Pulling a bike apart is quite easy. The tools I used were 3.8 drive ratchet with sockets, Allen hex keys, spanners, pliers, and screwdrivers. That's it, that's all I used. Um, nothing crazy, nothing so, you know, gnarly about it. Very simple, very easy, and I'll prove it to you. Let's jump right in. First, before pulling everything apart, I just took it down to the car wash and washed it because it was covered in dirt and it had to be done. So, cleaned it, washed, there we go, bang. Here she is, all pretty, all nice and clean. I'm taking the tank off, taking the front guard, side panels, each side, rear guard as well. Boom, away we go. So, first things first, let's take that seat off. Twist of a key and it is off. Take that back panel off. A few little Allen head keys there. It easily, like three, I think there's three screws. Get that, um, disconnect the battery first. Battery is important to disconnect. It prevents you from shorting your tools out while you're working on it. If you just accidentally lay the, um, just say the spanner across the, the positive and the frame, you're just gonna have a little bit of a blow out there. So try to prevent all that. And also sparks around a gas tank, not a very good combination. So disconnect the battery is always good practice. Let's jump straight back in. Using 10 mil socket and 10 mil spanner on each side, take that bolt out, slide straight out, very easy, very simple. Pull the tank up, be careful with the plugs. There are two plugs, one for your fuel sender and one for your fuel pump. And also you have the fuel hose as well, which is very easy, you just have a clamp and you just pull that little thing back. Place it down nice and gently, softly on something soft. Okay, we're taking the exhaust off, take those covers off, you've got those little screws in the heat plate with the Allen keys, just undo all of those. You'll slide off the, the heat shields, they have little rubber grommets, be careful of those, they do tend to slip and fall. There's also the two clamps that you have to do at the front there. Undo those, very simple. Um, one cheeky one at the back. Yeah, just pull that straight out. Boom. You've got two 12 mil um, bolt heads, unscrew those. Just be careful, they have sleeves, they will fall also. Slide the cones off, just um, be careful, just, just take a mental note of which way around they're going under your little heat shield there to protect your plastic that needs to come off and just pull that gently and away we go it's um that's that's pretty much it and then you got the front guard as well which i took off it didn't really capture that well but it was basically just four screws and it's off and you're done and you're good to go let's see what i have to say there it is it's all all being removed seat tank pipes so basically this, 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 and that little seat over there, this little, this little guy here, be getting resprayed as well as the tank. Um, so that's all for now. This can stay on because that's going to be all gone. This is going to be also replaced with a nice custom header design from Tinworks. The Zards will be replacing these slip ons, so I will no longer be using those guys. I'm pretty excited. Let's do this. Okay, the car's now packed and off we go to Color Fuel. Now Sam runs Color Fuel, he's an absolute legend and he does an amazing spray job on bikes and cars. You would have recognized his work on my Instagram feed. Most of the shots from Gasoline Motico that I take of these custom bikes are sprayed by Sam. So Sam was my number one man. We made sure to keep communication open, so to bounce ideas, to give him, like to make sure that we're on the same page, we were, we were talking back and forth, we were sending photos, we were sending ideas just really trying to create the right vibe for the bike. So I guess that was probably the hardest part about the whole thing is just trying to find the right style and design. I knew I just wanted it to be, to be brushed back to metal, but I didn't want it to be just metal. I feel like that could just be a bit bland for the style that I wanted. And it just so happened to be that a graphic designer from Chicago just randomly reached out to me offering his services to Motofuels, which I thought was incredible. And so I thought, hey, how about we just put these logos on my bike? Like, let's make this this bike a Motofuels machine. Like, let's do this, like, why not? Why not? And so that's what we settled on. And and Sam ended up creating the, just changing the logo a little bit just to make it fit down right down the middle there and um, both on the sides as well, like the Motofuels sides. And we made the lines just to replicate the fins and we just lined up the, the F to join the top line just because I, I just thought it was like a little cool little touch. So I left the tank in Sam's capable hands 
and he just went to town on it. He ended up just putting his paint stripper right over it, treated it, sanded it back. He got that, he got that awesome brush steel look through it. As soon as, as soon as the paint was off, it was already so much better for me. The red just wasn't my vibe. I had to get rid of the red. And it was just awesome seeing, he was just sending me through some photos, like some um, step by step photos of how it was all like coming along. And just seeing how he was like laser, like laser measuring the, the line so that was perfectly straight. So good, so amazingly, oh my goodness. And then I met up back with Sam, picked up the tank and just put it back together so fast that I didn't even record it because I was just, I was just, you know, you know what it's like, you know what it's like, come on. So basically reverse procedure, just um, put everything back together. <laughs> I guess. I don't know. I'm sorry. I apologize. I didn't do it. And the next video is going to be the installation of the Zard exhaust, the slip on cones. Bang. And then I'm going to be taking it to Kansai Giant, Johnny. Um, and he's going to be making up all the custom headers and the decat as well. It's going to be a good time. Guys, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed, please do. There's going to be a lot more of this sort of stuff coming out and plus a lot more, which I'm like getting really, I'm getting really pumped and keen about. The vlogs, I'd like to get on a weekly basis. It's probably be more like two weeks, but they will be happening. All right, guys, peace. I love you all. Thank you so much for watching. I just got an email, so I'm going to go and read that while you guys just check out this awesome B-roll. Peace, legends. Woohoo!